to transition, energy transition, electric vehicles and CNG. Um, by doing that, we'll be forcing our neighbors to do the same, reduce our dependence on fossil fuel. In the long term, we just have to come into that. This is the first time in the COP meetings, 27, 28 and co, that a statement was clearly made on energy transition. The previous COP meetings, no clear cut statement was made. Now, what this means now in the, is that in 20 years' time, they'll come to us and say, oh, we can't export cashew to Europe because the factory that processed the cashew used diesel to process the cashew, so they won't take the cashew. So there are serious issues and challenges ahead, which we we'll have to mitigate now. But in our own interest, we we'll embrace the um, energy transition for our own economic sake. We we'll export our oil. We should have moved to gas 30, 40 years ago, because over 70% of our hydrocarbons in the ground is gas, not oil. And we have consistently exported gas without putting the infrastructure in place to use gas domestically. Uh, in Europe, the cooking gas, the cookers in the kitchen, in the water heaters, all is connected to the gas infrastructure. So, in the meantime, the federal government is expanding the gas um, infrastructure through the AKK pipeline, section two of the um, Western pipeline. So we will embrace, for us in the states, we'll work with you, Mr. President. Um, we'll also seek the opportunities that are available from the federal government in terms of agriculture, infrastructure. Um, your Vice President, sir, is hands-on on agriculture. Um, since he's been in, um, We've seen the we've seen the seriousness in which our culture is, is taken. Either to either to in the last administration, everything in agriculture was done in CBN, to the extent that nearly all the states did not have any impact in agriculture. But we've seen a change now. Um, we have a good minister Bukeri who is engaging with all the states, sir. Well, sir, let me stop here, sir. We came to marry here and not make switches, sir. <laughs> So thank you very much for hosting us, sir. We appreciate the privilege, sir. I'm seeing uh, 
uh, here today. And uh, Your Excellency, the Governor of Rivers, you know, I read your statement. I said thank you very much for that statesmanship uh, broadcast and reliance on peace. It's only with peace that we can govern and governance has started, you know, in earnest. So some of you, uh, I don't know where, for a small town, for a broken circle that saved my life to ignorance and poverty and renew our home. Luckily, open to the man is there. And his God's name is home. And we have spared that for all of us. Uh, yes, to many of you, there is one problem. Before you got here, I think to Baruru and myself, we are reviewing the elements of the point. I will come to your meeting to spell out what am I thinking. We'll touch on judicial payment, judicial and the reform there too. We'll talk on the need for construction. And uh, I will say bye bye to the application of Federal or Aurora or State Road. Let's regard our government as our new joint responsibility. If I have to stay in Abuja, I don't. It's not easy. Let's look at our children. It's too feeling will be back quickly. Starting from local government <laughs> to state government and the federal government. All children are our own. We have to be ready to protect them and look into their future. And uh, look at the economic opportunity that is available to us right now. Let me leave you to enjoy your lunch. We will have time to talk more. Nigeria is looking to have all of you. I have a very lucky present too. Because I'm one of you. Let's go and have lunch. You have a very, very happy and rewarding Christmas and New Year. And go right to long life and good health. And give Nigeria peace and stability that is required to move now. And make this man forward and not stay. God bless and yeah. Your Excellency is here? Yeah. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll proceed, sir. Thank you, sir. This way, sir.